Hey church family, JT here. Another day, another psalm. Are you guys sick of the psalms yet? No, of course not. We love this. Day 69, Psalm 69. We got some good stuff for today. Let's get after it. Here we have Psalm 69. You can see the title up there, Save Me, O God. You'll notice that this psalm is fairly long, and so we're actually not going to dig into all of it. We don't have enough time to really do that, but I'd encourage you in your own time to really uh, sit down and read through the entirety of the psalm. There's so much um, just amazing content here in this psalm. I believe in the New Testament, this psalm is referenced four or five different times. Most of it is um, showing how Christ is the fulfillment in so many sections of this psalm. And so really there's so much good uh, content to meditate on in your own time. But what we're going to do is dig into kind of one general theme of the psalm and then also focus in on verse 3 here for our point of application. In Psalm 69, what we see is that the psalmist is again experiencing the threat of their enemies. And this results in the psalmist praying diligently to the Lord and waiting and pleading on the Lord to act on their behalf. As you've likely noticed throughout our time in the Psalms, this is a regular theme. And the reality is we all tend to go to God when we need something from Him. When we're in a difficult situation in life or um, some trial has come our way, we often turn with diligence back to the Lord. And that isn't wrong to do. That's what the psalmist does. But what I want to draw our attention to in this psalm is specifically verse 3. You'll notice it, it says here, the psalmist says, I am weary with my crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. The psalmist here seems to be exhausted with the process of prayer. You'll notice just the word usage here. He says, I am weary with my crying out. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. The psalmist is exhausted in their prayer. They have pleaded and, and went to God so much so that they're weary from their crying out. Their throat is parched as they've been looking and waiting upon God and, and, and hoping for him. Their eyes have grown dim. So I want us to contemplate this simple question today. Why does the Lord make us wait? Wouldn't it make sense that if God really is all-powerful, that he would just immediately help the psalmist and us in the midst of our trials? The psalmist clearly needs help, but why does God make him wait? Why does he make us wait on him? Let me offer this one basic principle that I think speaks to this internal struggle that so many of us have in regards to waiting on the Lord because we all experience this. It doesn't matter if where you're at in life, you've either already experienced this, are experiencing this presently, or you will experience this, this waiting on God. I want to offer this really basic principle that is easy to say, often difficult to get into our hearts, but so important to leading us in our growth and grace. And this it's this principle that there is purpose in the process. That God is often accomplishing more in us in these seasons of waiting than even what we want him to accomplish for us in the answers to our prayers. And these things we're asking for are not bad things. These are often very good things. But we have to realize that there is purpose in the process, that God is indeed seeking to accomplish things in us during these seasons of waiting. We see this occur in the psalmist as at different times in Psalm 69, he recounts God's glory, he remembers the Lord's faithfulness, and he worships God, even though we don't see the answer in his prayer, at least in this psalm. In the midst of his trial, we see him kind of, he's pleading with God and then moving into worship, pleading with God and then recounting the beauties and the glory of God. Let me suggest today that if you ever find yourself in a spot in life where God seems to have grown quiet, where you are, like the psalmist, weary from crying out to God in prayer. Your throat is parched, your eyes have grown dim as they wait on God to answer. Remember that God is not distant. Remember that God does not put you on call waiting, but rather seek by the Spirit's power to determine what God is seeking to do in your heart and mind in the midst of your waiting. It's only when you can begin to see those glimmers of grace in the midst of the waiting that you can begin to see the purpose in the process, and that you can begin to see what God is trying to accomplish in you in the midst of your waiting. And then hopefully you, like the psalmist, 
can praise God in the midst of trial, realizing that even in your waiting season, God has not forgotten you, but is actually at work within you for your growth, for your good. It's when we remember that God's primary objective in our lives is to make us more and more into the image of his son, Jesus, that we can begin to see the purpose in the process and that the work that he is doing in our waiting is for our good and ultimately for his glory.